on Ravaged. That is our first round two map for now, and is going to be quite good, I would imagine, because Field Dust and Google Frog are, I'd say, the strongest, most consistent players in this tournament. They are. Um, Sigero is actually topping the leaderboard uh, recently. That's, that's I fair. expect either of these three to get, you know, the three first places. Anyway, we have Spiders versus Clovekeys. Yeah, and that is, we were talking about this before during the break that we figured something like this might happen, either Cloaky Mirror or someone goes Spiders. Google Frog going Spiders in this map, with all the cliffs that it has, it makes a lot of sense to go for Spiders. And Google Frog doing the Spider thing, sending fleas everywhere to see what's happening. Or at least sending fleas mm. to likely expansion locations as well as the main base. Which is exactly yep. where anyone sent fleas. Oh, actually, I would like to see, the Southeast one is really nice. Just to make sure if anything comes along in that little corridor, which it often does, that that flea is aware of it. In this map, if you can notice, like most of the expansions are easily ish defended. They're very secure. They have very small bottlenecks leading to them. In this case, fleas are just forcing you to never naked expand. Very, very nice in this map. Which is going to be interesting because since Google Frog has the fleas, and they're up against Cloaky, I could see them potentially naked expanding this entire time. Which, I, you don't think, on this map, like I said, you can get away with, but with Google Frog being able to get away with that and Field Class not so much, that'll be, that'll be a slight advantage for Google Frog, which will build up, unless Field Class is able to put, apply similar pressure. At the moment, you can see how Field Class has a little more echo. He just sent his com uh, forward. Well, Google Frog is going, as we've said, to the naked expansion, is making a radar really, really forward, and is going to fortify the middle. Oh, and also Walter main base, because why not? <laughs> they're flying spider. I mean, they don't have right. to worry about it. That is cheeky. That is... But Google Frog is really one of the most creative Terraform users uh, in this game. Yeah, I mean, I'd say Google Frog overall is one of the most creative players. We don't see a lot of people really messing around with things other than, you know, basic units and stuff. And then we see Google Frog. I mean, Google Frog, obviously, the main designer of the game. I would expect they'd be using all the mechanics. So that is <laughs> right. a... That is pretty well par for the course, and I'm glad to see it, because that's the great thing about this game, is the sheer amount of mechanics that exist that you can play with to give yourself the edge. Well, we have a glaive of Felthas in the south... Um, expansion to catch any naked expansion, but it's actually in the wrong place because it's not in the middle. Um, and seems like Google Frog has so much knowledge and just... To me, it seems that Google Frog is controlling the game at the moment. Yeah, it's also worth noting that Google Frog, because they're playing spiders, they have radar on their... They have radar on their builders. They have enough radar coverage to yeah. see that this glaive is here. So right now, they're not really in a position where they're going to be too concerned about what's going on. They know exactly what's happening, and they've got that glaive forced out, at least with... Oh, wow. That... Okay, I mean, half a dozen fleas. I guess that works, but sheesh. that Those fleas made cost. <laughs> Three yeah, fleas for one glaive. See. Yeah, definitely. Basically, if you have enough fleas, it's a riot. It has so much DPS. Of course, it has, doesn't have a lot of health, but health is not everything nowadays. And now these slaves are going straight into a common air. Lotus. And yeah, not finding a whole lot of mileage out of it, though. I mean, right. one glaive down for free, another one getting caught up by Venom. Just Yeah, this is really not giving Field Thoughts many openings. They're managing to get their economy set up, but like we said earlier, they are defending a lot. However, so is Google Frog. Despite the fact that they have less room for naked expansion, or more room for naked expansion, rather, Fieldhouse has applied the necessary pressure to push Google Frog to build those defenses. Right. Anyway, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's exactly the point of where um, Google Frog is going for the long game. He's like uh, working on his attrition, on not, not losing units, and his economy is going up a bit slower while Felthas is going for you know I think that if Felthas doesn't you know get the upper hand um, soon Google Frog has it I yeah I can see that although at this point Felthas has managed to get quite a bit of the map they've managed to get a solid half the map putting a lot of pressure on here they have the Roccos which of course you do against spiders and they're managing to at least provide a little bit of 
covering fire, though to an extent killing their own. But yeah, even then, now that oh the glaives are gone, there's the fleas going in, getting rid of every single one of the Rockos. I mean, they will have the defender to at least, or pick it rather, to at least stop it, but that is forcing Field Toss back. That is opening things up again for Google Frog, and that's exactly perfect. Like, yeah, wonderful flea micro, just a form of art, really. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing that it was because the Rockos killed their own glaives. Granted, there were only a couple glaives, but that's all they needed to stop the fleas, but those errant rockets ended up being their doom. And then again, on top with the glaives here, I mean, the Northwest... Yeah, probably. Back to the game proper. We have... We have more Rockos. Again, Field Us, they do have, I'd say, the upper hand. They have the economic upper hand, they have the production upper hand. Google Frog doing what they can to keep what they have, but it's still... Man, it's still a lot of Rockos. Right, right. Yes. At the moment, it seems that Felt Us is doing really, really well. And um, although he might just really, really soon suicide into a Stardust, we will see it. Um, depends on what gets where first. Uh, looks like right off the bat, we are going to see no, that Stardust not get suicided into. Yes, yes, yes. This is. Yeah, seems like Felthos played it correctly. Yeah, they got the Rockers going in, getting rid of all the characters, both the characters. The geothermal plant is up, and it does have all the terraforming it needs to keep itself alive, but that almost doesn't matter. Felthos does have the energy themselves, so they're not losing anything if they keep it alive. And with the commander going down, that reduces most of the expansion opportunities, and that could be enough, and then with... Oh, the Rockers... Now there's the flank! Okay, there we go. Glaive's coming on the flank to help... To help a little bit with the Rockos, but this is the tricky thing. Like trying to flank mid or between two ground levels against Spider, that is a tricky thing, which is not working out. As the Venoms are managing to get in, and the Thugs behind them, so I'm sorry, Hermit's behind them. So at least that is going to be, that is going to manage to deflect things a bit, manage to save the Commander, but that is still a tricky situation. Really only saved by this Lotus here, stopping the Glaze and coming around, getting rid of Google Frog's Commander. That's at such low HP. But yeah, even then, Google Frog, they're still behind. Yes, so much behind. I, I think this is very one-sided. Felsa saturation is just going up and up and up. And Google Frog just isn't. Maybe getting the reclaim from the attacks is going to somewhat help, but really... I don't know. I don't know if Google Frog can get out of here. Yeah, the main problem Especially right now is... with the sniper now. I mean, they're accessing. They don't have any caretakers in the main base, so reclaim is all well and good, but... Unless they have the caretakers in the main base to help build things up, they don't have much. Like, yeah, yeah. So at this, this point, the uh, Ulthos, they've managed to get rid of most of Google Frog's army. Google Frog doesn't have any massive counters for this. Google Frog's not building any of their factories to to keep up or building any fact or building any caretakers to set up. Whereas Philthos is building a gunship plant, has built a gunship plant rather, and is fully set up for production. Yeah, and he's expanding everywhere that he can. This is so over. I just cannot see this turning around. Well, at it's any a rate. of Felfas just, you know, being careful and not suiciding. So he'll slowly grind Google Frog until Google Frog understands the situation. <laughs> I think Google Frog is getting it now that they do have their caretakers up after a little bit of excess, managing to get their caretakers into position, but that is still going to be a bit tricky, and at this point, it's... I mean, it's something. We have some recluses coming in to try to get rid of what they can. They're not doing a bad job against the... Like, wow, actually, between the Venom and the Venom is doing a fine job against the Rockos, but still, the Rockos have the numbers, they have the position, they can get rid of the Venom, but the recluses are still doing a fine enough job keeping themselves at a decent enough position to get rid of most of the Rockos without taking too much damage. Unfortunately, though, that Phantom there is going to stop them, or anything that gets even mm -hmm. remotely close to the army at this point. Uh, I, yeah, oh, just okay. the amount of blue, amount of blue on the screen versus the amount of red. This is, <laughs> you know, the the, the best, uh, the, the easiest way to indicate where things are going in Zero K. It's map control, and it's it's numbers and it's metal and the Speaking metal which, though, is just on one side. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, though, we do have a lot of that reclaim we were talking about from before. That is being used. There's still 400 left, and the gunship plant up. Um, this is even. Google Frog is managing to maybe find a way to get back in the game, but Harpies do one-shot Glaives, and they do do a pretty good job against everything else in the Cloaky Factory as well, so this that is kind of their one last shot. If they manage to get that, 
they manage to get a small army of harpies and not run into Fieldtoss's army of harpies, there is a chance. A small chance, mind you, but there is a chance. But at this point, the harpies, yeah. they're, they're known. And Fieldtoss taking this yeah. cue as, taking this as a cue, rather, to go in and just intercept everything before it becomes a major problem. Mm -hmm. And there's so, so, so many turrets. Fieldtoss just spread turrets all over. It's not easy to attack, not easy anything to break from wherever he am, wherever Google Frog is stuck in. Yeah, and that's exactly what's happening. Google Frog trying to dig, doing what they can, but no, that's not yeah. it. That is towel time. Google Frog is yeah. saying the GGs, and that is going to be this game. Yeah. How Very was, nice. Yeah, that was a bit more one-sided than I thought it would be. But, hey, good win. It's clean yeah, win. It, it's like exactly the pros and cons of spiders and cloakies. Felsos managed to expand fast enough, even though he had to, you know, not make it expand. And using the metal, just, you know, expanded more, while Google Frog couldn't keep up. Simple as that. Yeah, so at this point, it looks like most of the games are done. The only one up right now yes. seems to be NTO and Scipio nope. or Kingstad 400. Uh, Kingstad 400. Let's go Kingstad 400 or... Yeah. See how that's going. Because that is not a bad option. I mean, Kingstad, we seen earlier, pretty good. 400 is a very strong player. I expect 400 probably has a slight advantage, honestly, but we'll see once we get in. It's, Kingstad is uh, infamous for his troll coming. So... Yeah, he sometimes, uh, you know, puts uh, out of balance even good players. Um, we shall see. Well, right off the bat, it is Spider v Spider. Because why not have a yeah. Spider mirror on a map like this? And Kingstad already coming up right at the start, getting a fair bit of the center, but not really holding up with too much. But at the same time, managing to get that Northwest expansion, we just thought Google Frog had a hard time holding on to. So both players very even right off the bat, very even both in terms of metal and in terms of production. Overall, this is this is a very even game. Yeah, it does seem very spread. Although, like the map split is not common. Usually, the bottom player has the bottom pit, and the north, uh, you know, the top player is the the north. Yeah, um, that's what is west northwest. And so this kind of surprised me. But I don't know. Things are happening here. Um, weird things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, crab things. Oh, the crab looks like it m yeah, it's gonna get stunned out completely. But hey, that's still that still did enough damage in the northwest that Kingstad fell slightly behind 400 with a 20-ish metal lead, depending on reclaim and overdrive. But still enough that they're managing to hold on pretty well. I mean, their current map position is strong, but hmm. Yeah, but I, I think that currently 400 is lacking in units. He has a crab, and that's it. They have another crepe going on. It's it's not enough. You need co you need to control the place to, to to attack to maneuver. And they don't really have that at all. They've got. I mean, Kingstad on the other hand has pretty much taken out 400's north pit and Kingstad's yeah. south pit. Is, well, it's not been attacked right now. It's not really well defended, but no one's going for it. Really, right. all the distraction coming up north. That is that is where 400's focus has been. Kingstad. Kingstad knows it. They're just going in with that because they know, hey, we can get away with this. We just push in, get rid of these pickets, yeah. throw the crab in, and that, that'll do the trick with all these weavers up front. That could be a lot of build power gone. Oof. Except, you know, don't kill your own fleas. Maybe don't kill your own fleas. That would help. Still, though, again, that... That's another crab coming in from 400, having a hard time finding a whole lot of position at all. Oof. And that crab, that means half HP at the same time we have oh my. nothing else. This is it. This is the only thing going on. That is 400's main army here. Pretty much trying to defend all these weavers with one crab. And that's managing to find a little bit of position, mostly because the weavers have built up all the lotuses to keep things going. But... Honestly, with the amount of the crab support coming in from 400, sorry, from Kingstad, 
That is it. King Staz managed to break this. There is nothing defending this. The, we, the Hermits should be able to get whatever damage they need to stop the Lotuses. And the Crab, if they can get those Weavers, that'll be all the value in the world. But yeah. it looks like they can't. Weavers got away! Still, though, the amount of damage that dealt over to 400's economy is quite substantial. Yeah, well, somehow, um, income is, is kind of similar. I'm not sure what's going on. And the south is currently kind of blocked by a crab on the spire. It's really... And the crab died above. If 400 sends all the... Oh, the rivers have died. So they cannot reclaim it fast. He lost his build power just when he needed it. Ah. Well, that's... I mean, there's the value. That's that's what Kingstad needed exactly. And the thing with Kingstad is that they actually had less overdrive. 400 had a lot more overdrive than Kingstad going in. But now Kingstad's managing to even that up and get a bunch of reclaim and turn everything that just broke into territory for themselves. I mean, crab coming in from 400 could turn that around again. But... I mean, it's been a little over a minute, so that value has been had. These these metal extractors have paid for themselves. Not to mention the reclaim. Oh no, the south crab is now gone. Oh uh, yeah, I got knocked off the spire. That happens. And with that, that is going to be the south side basically taken by Kingstad. That is what Kingstad needed to break this, and now secure the entire south center. And Weaver is gone. This is very, very not good for 400. But I like how this game is like back and forth a bit, even if, I don't know, someone has the lead. Like, yeah. South was lost, North was won. This is what, you know, <laughs> you, you must concentrate on both sides of the map if you want to win. Yeah, as King said, ooh, their commander actually in a fair amount of risk. And it looks like that's mostly the reckless job at this point. We aren't seeing a whole lot of push from 400 to get rid of Kingstad's commander. I and mean, Kingstad did upgrade their commander a little bit, like you pointed out, they probably would. But other than the lightning rifle, it's not much. It's enough to stop the is... wet red backs, but... Ah! Kingstead! Your commander's at massive risk! And they got out of there. <laughs> they jumped out of there at the last yeah. second, but that is scary for them. Right. Um, at the same time, though, we have... A small little raid coming up from Kingstad to take out the center as well and fully secure the center for Kingstad. So with that, I'd say Kingstad has managed to secure fairly large lead. If they can hold this, and these weavers don't manage to deal the damage needed to get this completely broken, then that is going to be a massive blow to 400. At the moment, there's like 2.5k reclaim for south and about 2k for north. Um, this is not enough for 400. Just not enough. Uh, and now we have fleets that are going to kill a fusion. Oh my god. Ooh. This was brilliant. <laughs> this is... Yeah, that is exactly what you needed there. So at this point, King, King's dead. I mean, a strong push on the main base. If they don't lose too many units to the death explosions, should... Well, okay, it'll push back a little bit. It's not going to cause too much damage, but 400 losing that fusion plant still, that means they can't actually take advantage of all this reclaim. Their energy is just too low. I'm actually kind of surprised they... You know, control it for a bit with the high wind we have at the moment, but that's that's not enough. Just not enough. No, and um, I'm quite surprised the fusion plant was built on low ground like that. Don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, uh, the circumstances decide where you build things rather than your brain. Um, it's just, you know, in the heat of the battle, I need a fusion plant, I will just build one. In the right. first place that I click. Um, that makes sense. And on, yeah, and on this map where you have to both look, you know, look at the middle, look at the north bit, look in the south bit, and, and everywhere something goes wrong. So, to be honest, I don't fault 400 for building it there. Well, one thing that it, not so much fault 400, but rather that Kingstead took advantage of is having the tridents in advance of the harpies being built up. On top of that, Kingstead right. with a dozen, a dozen har or not banshees, but locusts. 
What's the call now? Locust, yeah. A dozen locusts coming over to the north side of the map just to try to find whatever they can. And considering that King's Dead, I mean, they have a massive map advantage. They have... They haven't really tried as big of a resource advantage as I thought they would. But still, they have position. Now they have air control. At this point, looks like King's Dead is just going to manage to push through with this. Unless Vilthas is able to either break production directly, which they might do yeah, with... 400 has a chainsaw. Chainsaws are nice. Yes, that's very true. They were they were thinking ahead and with that one. Note if the redbacks there are redbacks going into Kingston's base for some reason. Yeah, which weren't stopped by anything. Yeah. Well they are but redbacks. Redbacks are strong, are, are remarkably strong at short range. The hard part is of course keeping them alive long enough because they're complete glass cannons, but Ah, if they managed to get in, there would have been a lot of damage. But at the same time, though, we have King's Dad uh, yeah, doing nice. a much better job with this. And onto the chainsaw. They lost half of the ban of the locusts. But that still should yeah, be enough to get rid of that chainsaw. All of them. I don't think so. Just with the harpy support. Oh, you're coming. right. With the harpy support. The harpy support does manage to save it. Exactly. exactly. With the slow and, and the firepower, this was just what 400 needed in order to keep alive. But... To be honest, it seems like it might be turned around at the moment. I'm not entirely sure, but this didn't seem like, you know, uh, how we call it, metal delivery to your base. So they destroyed some stuff, but they gave so much metal. And with that, we have 400 pushing in, doing a bit of revenge damage, getting rid of a, a few metal extractors and lotuses, but at the same time with the recluses coming in, that should stop the hermits in their tracks. And an, an eraser, or an iris rather, why not? Just make it even easier right. to set up all the recklesses, set up all the hermits coming in as well, just to stop this pushing 400 out of here, but that's that's fine. 400 managed to get what they needed. They have a decent enough position. They managed to get a, quite a lot of reclaim as well, and they still have the northern reclaim. It's just the problem is wind has gone down. The, the locusts took most of the wind generators out. Right. Less energy, no fusion, that was sadly destroyed so 400 is going to access soon or well he, he wouldn't be able to use stuff um, yeah. to use the retail sorry well that to me that tells me that this is Keep. massive battle for 400 before i managed to get this and they are managed to get a fair amount of damage with the harpies and getting rid of the venoms and that opens things up for the hermits who are able to get in and possibly get in some damage onto the recluses if they can get in the back lines and to an extent they can, but the Rex is able to run away at the same time. It's a decent amount of value here. And didn't make AA. He knew that Harpies exist and he didn't make enough AA. This was I think fatal. I, I don't know. Like that well, the, the fresher... hermits are dying, but yeah, right, it, it does. But this was quite a thing. I don't know. I mean the Thresher at least saved them a bit, but now with now with all these harpies, not a whole lot of AA on the map. They could do some damage, at least for a small window, with a chainsaw coming up over to the western side of the map, that will close things off a lot. Like most of the western half of the map, that is that is chainsaw territory. So overall, it is pretty major. Like if you think about it, you have the chainsaw, you have the another chainsaw over to the south on top of the Thresher. So really right now, there's not a whole lot of easy uh, avenues for 400, but at the same time, Kingstad still has the economic advantage. They still have a lot of reclaim. They still have loads of territory and enough power to turn that reclaim into production if they need to. Right. If I were 400, uh, I would stop making air, like stop making gunships at the moment with the chainsaw in the middle and the threshers at uh, Kingstad's base. Um, let's see. No, he's continuing to make it. So maybe either he knows better than me, or it wouldn't work. To be fair, though, they are playing spiders. So especially in the mid-map ones, if they just get an army over on top of the hill and get rid of that chainsaw, then the harpies have free reign. Right, Not to mention, defensively, right, the harpies have free reign. Because there's a tarantula now, but only one. Not a whole lot of focus on mobile AA is coming out to Kingstad right now. So yeah, A few gremlins are coming. Notice. Hmm? Gremlins, gremlins. Oh, you're right, yeah. Started making gremlins. And now you can see a few fleas doing some nice stuff. Oh, and the crabe. 400's best answer to stuff is crabe at the moment, it seems. <laughs> Spider Factory's best oh, answer to stuff is crabe, usually, especially when it comes to Actually, defense. Yes. Oh, look at Kingston's commanders. 
King's commander is going down. Oh, yeah, there it is. The Harpy's able to stop that, and that is going to be a major blow, considering that Kingstad has been very, fairly even on economy. They're ahead now, yes, but that means the Northwest is essentially unexpandable. We're, n we're not going to see Kingstad take that Northwest ever again. Because their focus is going to be either getting rid of 400's base or getting rid of the sides of 400. But pushing in Weavers is likely going to be too risky as an investment for their army, considering that their army has just been completely destroyed. Yeah, the moment 400 is kind of closing the gap. Um, it's far more um, balanced than I expected like a few minutes ago, but you know, I like balanced games. Oh, I mean, that's exactly the thing. That's what we we're looking for in the first place was an even match that's going to be, well, first off, the one that takes the longest, so then we don't have to jump into other matches if we don't have to, <laughs> and also because it is the most even game, and this is just it still feels like Kingstad has the advantage. They have a two-fold metal advantage for the most part. 400 can reclaim their way into parity, but it's by reclaim only. Kingstad just has more map control. It's just a question of how do you break your opponent, and I... I mean, general consensus has typically been you either get the massive army or you go through another theater, and air control has already been... That's been done. There's no way of getting air control. There's too many chainsaws on the field. As for numbers of units, I mean, Spider kind of has that, but other than... You know, massive crabs, you don't get that massive amount of units. It's still a very micro-oriented factory. So this matchup makes it tricky. And even with the Cloaky, that still is a micro-oriented factory. So it's still a situation where large numbers of units is only going to be so effective. Although, admittedly, large numbers of Roccos would be quite handy. Yeah, I'm just that... I don't know. I'm, I'm, like, still trying to figure out why 400 is making so much gunships. He's like, and, and he needs to max. There are like six maxes that 400 should have made, and he hasn't. Um, and I'm starting to make three of them for sure. Actually, all of them they're starting to make now, but you're right. That could have been done five minutes ago, and it would have been just fine. Right. Uh, oh, look at the southeast. We have an invasion force starting to... Yeah, two flank attack, actually. I mean, we have, well... We have the invasion coming from Kingstead over to the southeast. At the same time, 400 trying to break through the center of Kingstead, trying to break through their main army. And there's not a whole lot Kingstead had to defend, but at the same time, 400 is losing the entire northeast. This one Stardust is the only thing. The Stardust and the Harpies, when the Tarantula dead, those Harpies will have free reign. That, and it oh, looks like... Nice. Well, no, okay, most of the Tarantulas... Sorry, you're right, the Tarantulas are not dead. Two of the Tarantulas still alive. Most of the Harpies still forced back, but managing to get a fair amount of damage onto the Harpies. And on top of that, with the oh, Razor up as well... Yes, this was... And the crab should... Right. Oh my god. Yeah, the, the crab might be able to stop it, but it's still enough that the harpies are going down. And with that, this is the la these are the last three harpies. There are two of the last three harpies that 400 has. The razor is down, the tarantulas as well, but still, the harpies are gone. However, 400 did manage to defend their base. They lost pretty much nothing. They lost no economy in that entire exchange, while at the same time, Kingstad has lost a lot of position in the front, and they're potentially contained. At least lightly so. Well, the crab, actually, not lightly so. The crab right in front of the base. There is a Widow trying to put itself in a position where it can stun out with it. Ah, there we go. They got, got the friend. Got enough to stun yeah, this thing. Yeah, it's going to be there stunned it is. now. Let's see if it can be saved enough. I don't think it can. But at the same time, we have 400 over the center, well, western center of the map, set up to basically get rid of that chainsaw as I was talking about earlier. There's not a whole lot of gunships yeah. to take advantage of that, but still, with the chainsaw gone, that does open things up, and this is where I'm thinking 400 was building their gunships for, is for that, for defense, and when they get rid of the chainsaw, which they're about to do. I, it's just amazing how hermits can walk everywhere. Hermits are just, you know, walking armor, they don't have that much DPS, but just going everywhere, and it just takes time to kill them, and that's what they're good at. They are a very tough unit, and that is... I mean, that's allowed them to get through all these stingers, no problem. That's allowed them to get through everything else that was set up. And that is now the center broken from Kingstead, and 400 able to take that as soon as they want to. I mean, they don't have any weavers right there. They're mostly focusing on getting the defense up. But once that's set up, it's just a matter of can they deal with Kingstead's counterattack, which is coming, and which is quite extensive, though mostly anti-air. Ooh, at the same time, though, that's a lot of... 
He has a lot of hermits. And a lot of blast wings. Yeah, I'm not sure I follow this. But yeah, the gremlins okay. stopped it. If it weren't for the gremlins, that actually wouldn't have been a bad idea, because with the gremlins, or without the gremlins, the blast wings could have gone in and burned everything down. But the gremlins being there, able to tear those blast wings apart and open things up again for Kingstead, allowing them to retake the center western expansion. Mm -hmm. And that is necessary. So again, at this point, Kingstead managing to even things out a little bit, and economically, again, both players are at a dead heat. Hmm. I would say, though, there's a slight advantage for 400, theoretically. Reclaim is working out for Kingstead right now, but Static Economy, that is where 400 is winning right now. They just don't have a whole lot of power set up for their overdrive. They've got... They have some, but again, they have not really rebuilt the power infrastructure the way that they had it before they lost the fusion plant. They have another one, but they don't have as many wind generators, and wind is such a powerhouse on this map, I'm surprised they haven't rebuilt them. Yeah, don't ask me, but and now you can see the hermits going somewhere else. It's just like an unstoppable force. But here come the harpies. Oh, watch it. We have tridents. We have Tridents coming in from 400. Yeah. Very much prepared to deal with this. I mean, it'll, it'll slow down the Hermits at least. Like, the Parbies will be able to get some damage in, but the Hermits are able to get rid of most of the defenses, and that is yeah. huge. Because that means that a second wave of anything coming in after the Harpies are either destroyed or chased off, if he even needs to go that far, and it looks like it won't, the Harpies getting chased off enough, the Hermits are managing to get rid of the Stardust, managing to get rid of the Mexes. One more Stardust left, if that goes down, that is the entire base, and with that, 400 will have the north side of the map entirely to themselves. Ooh, and with the geo plant yeah, down as well. Tridents. Oh, tridents King's dead. Went down to the razors. Yeah, I thought, and we have a yeah. new stardust here. Ah, okay, we're turning things around here. King's dead managing to get those harpies back in position. Yeah, good job with the razor then. Still though, the, yeah, the, hermits, just... the hermits are dealing dealing enough damage that the question just comes to where is the rebuilding force? Because I don't see any weavers around here at all. And while these hermits, like if they go down, that's. I Man, it's a lot of hermits, but really it's, it's only about 15 hermits, or actually 9 hermits in the base right now, and they're being pushed back hard, yeah. so, I mean, a second attack might come in, but all that reclaim basically being donated to King's Dead without much to show for it. I mean, a small reduction in static economy, but not by much. Well, at the same time, we see that the entire center expansion of 400 has been destroyed. 400 are trying to defend as best they can, but they lost that expansion as well, so that's more metal they lost. But their eastern expansion is still in a strong position. So overall, 400 with the stronger static economy. Still in the stronger yeah, static economy. Yeah, but is now going to die, which is kind of yep. sad. Um, no, no, I think this pyramid invasion in the end was not successful. It wasn't like Kingstad didn't lose as many units. Okay, he lost some static, you know, defenses, but. Static defense costs less. That's, that's yeah. the point. Because it's static. So the fact that the razors were there to uh, counter the, tr the tridents was really game deciding. Um, and that's the thing. And now with that crab again being taken out and the harpies not given much room to breathe, I don't see where 400 can get back in this. They've again lost air control, but now Kingstad has air control. They have enough room that their own harpies can move around. There's the tridents, yes. But there is enough anti-air from 400 that Kingstad, sorry, from Kingstad, that 400 can't really move around too much. And not as much anti-air from 400 to keep Kingstad anywhere but 400's base. And it's the only place that 400 really is protected from the air. Yeah, although the crepe seems to have been saved. Color Just surprised. barely. Well, it helps that a second crab, it helps the second crab came in to help with that. Yeah, definitely. And some carefully placed lotus was really helpful. Um, but now Kingstad is just munching all the metal from the northwest. Yeah, 4,000 metal from that fight. Oh, A wow. lot of it from 400, too. So, this yeah. is... That is a position where 400 has a bit of a chance to get back in, because they do have a, a, this, well, a couple thousand metal from the area over the east, but that's still only so much. Yeah. I mean, that being said, the 400 oh, does have an do attrition you see advantage. The Dante? The Dante? Dante? There oh it is! That's the other way you end the games. Striders! I was wondering when that would happen. Because we don't... Yeah. We haven't seen... I haven't Flying honestly seen a lot of Striders in nice. 1v1. Like, 
nor they used to happen around 10 15 minutes into the game you'd see a strider hub and a dante and just use that to end the game but recently striders haven't been a thing i've noticed yeah they've used less i think but i i think it's more because you have very very strong tools in the factories um oh that's right yeah you have things dante. like you have the racketeers you have Rocketeers, right. and you have Glaive Spam, and you can make Impalers, and you can make Firewalkers, which just burn everything. It's, 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 there's so much things to do. Um, so Striders are not always solution to stuff. Especially, actually, I wouldn't go Striders against um, Spiders because of what happened now. You can use yep. Widows and <laughs> done them, although now it managed to go because it was only one widow yeah i need to have a couple widows to get that 12 seconds done and really get there right. really get enough mileage out of it and at this point now this is where the dante is going to come in and i think this is where 400 is gonna have to throw in the towel because they haven't got much their production is in jeopardy they're doing what they yeah, can but it's not yeah. enough to really stop things and now with all the metal extract has gone down only 13 metal per second income i mean they are yeah, this is this is it. Unless the Dante is stopped like immediately, and even then, the map control has been taken over to the northwest. The map control could easily fall to the southeast. And the Dante, while they've gone down, they still they dealt a significant us. blow. Like, the question just becomes, how is Kingstack going to use this opening to get in, or even bother? Like Maybe they'll just do exactly what they're doing, which is to build up the economy. Yeah, I think they're just going to use the opening. I mean, that makes sense. Makes perfect sense to do that, really. There's not a whole lot else I can think of, because, well, it's... That's what you do, ultimately. Oh. Well, so... Now we wait for Graves to die. <laughs> Yeah, pretty it's, much. <laughs> it's funny. Units can be really, really awesome that they are, have so much health in sometimes, but now I'd want Grave to have a bit less health, you know. Well, given that the crab was stunned while moving, it does have this one does have less health, but nothing to really follow yeah. it up. Right. Actually, both of them are stunned while moving. Ooh, that is... Once this follow-up force gets in here, if it has enough time to get in here, and it Kinda does. I mean, at least the, spec the Phantom right. managed to get in and knock the Crab out of position, but... Yeah. yeah, there it is. There's that lack of HP. There's the fact that it has no armor where it's moving. And that is... That is 400's entire army left. Like that, They haven't really got much left to deal with what Kingstad has. Kingstad, that yeah. Dante push. I mean, it was risky, and like you said, it didn't... It didn't completely end the game, but it broke the stalemate. And that was all it needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Just, you know, economy dropping from 40 to 10 is not something that is to be taken lightly. Nope. So that was that. I believe that is going to be the entirety of round two. Yeah, that was the last match of round two. So we're going to be moving on to round three pretty shortly. And I just wanted to point out that we had... that. Thank you for Tower Plane Power for subscribing. You get a towel. Because that's an email for the channel. It's a towel. They can throw. I don't know. I feel like I should probably t I say thanks to people who sub, even though it feels a little bit odd. Yeah, no. If people subscribe, they deserve at least a thank you. Makes sense. Anyway, with round two done, we're just going to wait on round three, and so for the time being, we're just going to be well, waiting on round three. Let's get that Wait for those brackets to be set up, and wait for the rooms to be set up, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. 